I have long believed that key to transforming our societies are our stories, our relationships, our culture, our politics, even our economic structures are all woven by the stories we tell ourselves and each other. Those whose stories are featured and privileged are those with power. I'm also convinced that the most crucial stories needed in this time to reshape our societies are carried in the voices and hearts of women around the globe. So to me, nothing is more important than leveraging the power of technology to create a forum that empowers women by sharing their stories. Not only do stories strengthen and cultivate global community, but when women tell their stories, they form connections, they share learning and strategies, and they are strengthened in their self-confidence and leadership. Yensina Larson has brilliantly harvested, harnessed new media to give voice to the world's previously unknown stories of women. An unstoppable and award-winning social media entrepreneur and international journalist, she founded World Pulse when she was just 28. In under a decade, it has become a uniquely effective digital communication network linking tens of thousands of people and women from more than 190 countries into a powerful force for change, impacting millions of lives. Through World Pulse, women are building global movements, launching businesses, and changing harmful cultural practices. Many communicate using internet cafes and cell phones from isolated rural villages and conflict zones. World Pulse is also now training women in digital empowerment, fostering a network of women leaders from some of the planet's most forgotten regions, giving them access to global audiences and networks. It is generating a whole new generation of digital citizen communicators breaking stories from some of the most tormented regions in the world, including Yemen, Burma, Afghanistan, and Liberia, tackling issues from corporate environmental pollution in South Africa to bride burning in Afghanistan to the Thai-Burma border conflict, to name just a few. Yensina realized early on that women everywhere are on the front lines of ecological and social destruction, but she understood something even more important. Women are also the world's greatest hope. She knew that women are resilient, impassioned, and skillful defenders of life and health and justice, and that they are often the glue that holds communities together. Yensina speaks globally from the BBC to the United Nations, and this year alone, World Pulse has won three international global awards and was praised by the New York Times recently as a vital online space for women to speak out free from cyber violence. The rise of women's leadership globally is the single most important key to addressing the dire ecological and social crises we face. We'll begin with a video, and then please join me in welcoming the extraordinary Yensina Larson. Every woman has a story to tell. I help women tell their own stories. Across the planet, a pulse is rising. Like never before in history, women are using the power of communications technology to speak out and connect. I knew ever since I joined World Pulse that I have to make my dreams come true. There was amazing women from Nigeria, from Kenya, from Sudan. Women from more than 190 countries are logging on to a global network called World Pulse, telling their stories and changing the world. Technology is the number one for women to open the world, to be connected to each other, to have a network. It can be a story from a woman living in Uganda, and immediately somebody living in China says, oh, that's what is happening in my country. Now I can write about it here in World Pulse. When a woman logs on to World Pulse, she has a safe space where she can write her story, make global connections, and access information and opportunities. 
Through networking on World Pulse, women are gaining confidence as leaders and creating a chain reaction of change, standing up for their land rights, making international headlines, finding new jobs, being heard by international governments, and training hundreds of other women in their communities to speak for themselves and transform society. That energy, I think that energy has to be there uh, if you are to do something tremendous. To be connected gives me again life to think about how I can be solution. Not to be victims, but solution. To be voice through World Pulse. Now is our time and now is our opportunity and we can't miss our time. We are ready for change. Good morning, pioneers. With every single cell in my body, I believe that the creative human potential of women and girls is the greatest untapped resource in our world. And at a time when there is no nation on earth where women have an equal voice, I know that digital technology is the fastest tool that we have to truly unleash this potential and achieve true global equality. So today, I want to share with you a little bit about my journey and what I've learned along the way of the, the three things we must do now to crowdsource the feminine intelligence of the planet and how you can be a part of this unstoppable digital revolution. Over the past 10 years, it has been my job to listen to the voices of women from every single country of the world. And in a way, I've been a bit of a, a mad scientist in a digital laboratory just on this quest of how do you create this, com this communication architecture to truly connect women worldwide. And this has been daunting. But we've discovered the design. And the thing is, in the process, I have discovered my own voice. I grew up paralyzingly shy. I was homeschooled in rural Wisconsin. This is a photo of behind my barn where I used to go and dream. Years later, I took off to the Amazon and to the Burma Thai border and became a freelance journalist. But I met these incredible women leaders and they kept telling me, please, Yensina, take our messages and our stories and tell them to the world. And ultimately, I realized that I wanted to create a communication source where these women could speak for themselves and tell their own stories to the world. Today, this is a snapshot of World Pulse, a day on the pulse. <laughs> Tens of thousands of women and men connecting from over 190 countries together, connecting and going on to impact over 2 million more in their communities. Yet, um, as you can imagine, I'm also reading these stories on a daily basis that are incredibly hard. And as you open yourself to the truth of what women are experiencing on a large scale, you feel raw pain. And, and sometimes you, you want to turn away from it, and, and I cannot tell you how many times I have had my head bowed over my laptop sobbing. These women, they have shown me what, what it feels like to be in the Sudan, and to be wearing pants, and to be jailed, and to be whipped for it. To witness in Kashmir your community 
stoning the widows on the outskirts of town. Or to lose your loved ones in the United States because of the high rates of maternal mortality for women of color. Or to have your aunts holding your legs open to cut you. This violence is the largest human rights abuse in the world today, violence against women. It affects more than one billion women and girls. And I can tell you, that does not even touch the spiritual suppression of those that are living in fear of it. And we're not even talking about the suppression of men who parts of them are, are dying inside as they're numbing themselves. But something happened for me when I connected to this pain. I didn't die inside. I felt more connected to truth, to the courage. These women, they, they had so much hope and they saw the way forward and they, they knew what they needed. And I could see that I could partner with them. And it was so liberating. I felt <laughs> incredibly alive. And something else happened for me. It, it put, put things in perspective for me. Here I was, I was trying to build World Pulse, and I, ha I had no idea how to do a digital revolution. <laughs> no experience. And people were telling me that Yancini, your vision, it's, it's too big. You, you, you have to scale it back. For five years, I did not sleep. <laughs> it was like I was, I was literally holding the weight of the world's women on my shoulders. But as I saw their challenges and I connected to them, more and more I realized my challenges didn't seem so bad. They seemed actually pretty doable. And this other thing started to happen. As World Pulse started to take off, these connections were happening uh, across borders, and all these different cultures were coming together of women, and they were, they were um, commenting on each other's posts, and they were saying to each other, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. And they started to bloom. And they were motivated to go on and just create this bigger change in their communities. And then for me, personally, this wave of messages started coming. My, my nephew was diagnosed with liver cancer. I got s my sisters from Bangladesh sent notes of solidarity. I got notes from husbands and from sons who were saying thank you. My wife, my um, mother, she's a different person because of these new connections. I would get letters, oh my God, the poetry, the poetry, the poetry. A woman from the United Arab Emirates said, thanked me saying, it is no exaggeration to say that through World Pulse I have unmuted my soul. And they would say, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up to me. And I, I just want you to know that this is all available to you. When I look out into the future, I can see now that information technology is now becoming relationship technology. And what, what matters is that we, we use it in a sacred way. Our cell phones, they can be these doorways to distraction, or we can choose to have them be pathways of purposeful connection.
And as we use this technology and one by one by one, as we start connecting to each other and we're exchanging our, our energy, our talent, our treasure, we can solve these world problems and we're going to do it faster. We don't have to just wait around for the World Bank or the United Nations that are very slow moving. We can take matters into our own hands. The other thing is, we have these singular voices today, like Malala, incredible voice for girls' education that we see in the headlines. She's incredible. She's one voice speaking for many, but the truth is there are tens of thousands of Malalas in Pakistan and beyond, and we need to connect them, and we need to listen to them and make sure that those voices are heard. So now um, we're going to hear one of these voices, one of these incredible voices that has changed my life, and her name is Sister Zef. Sister Zeff was her writing on World Pulse, and she was discovered by the Lynn Sims Prize for Grassroots Women Changemakers. And she has recorded a very special video message for us. We had hoped that she would be here today, but unfortunately, the Pakistani government did not allow her to travel here freely. But this is what she very, very, very much wants you to know. We'll roll this video. Dear Honorable Guest, and the prestigious organizers. Assalamu alaikum from Pakistan. When I was 13 years old, I was beaten by a teacher in a class. I would never go back to a school and decided to start my own school. Since then, I go door to door and convince families to send their girls to my free school. I have taught hundreds of girls and empowered even more. And all of this is in an open air classroom. That was a very tough time in my life. I never got a chance to take rest, no support or appreciation. I got tired and sick, and my home was attacked twice by gunmen. Luckily, I was able to escape. When I joined World Pulse and I shared my experience, it was life-changing. I won a prize for my work and for my writing. And with the support, we started nine new projects. We hired more teachers, and people from around the world started joining us as volunteers. I started getting respect and appreciation from around the world. And my students, for the first time, sit in a room under a roof, which I bought with the prize money. And this is just a beginning. I have a vision for education for every girl and for them to be connected to the world. I wish World Pulse to reach all those women of Pakistan who are still living as slaves of men. Physical and mental torture is a story of every day. Honor killings are very common. 63% girls are still out of school and they have no right to take a decision for their lives. World Pulse has given a new life to me. My students and I have a potential to reach thousands and thousands in Pakistan and around the world. I would request you to join me at World Pulse. We want to be connected with you. Together, we can change the world. We have to take a stand for girls' education now. I want you to raise my voice in the whole world and spread my message that only educated girls can save the world. These are girls who will give a birth to your future. Thank you. Give it up for Sister Zeph. These are uh, a few pictures of her students that she wanted to transmit out to all of us. So like Sister Zeph, there are so many other women who've showed me the, the power of what, what is possible. One of them is a woman named Nema Namadamu from the Democratic Republic of Congo one of the most violent and silenced regions of the world for women today with only 2% internet access. Nema began to come onto World Pulse, but she started igniting this movement of hero women, of, of starting women-only cyber cafes and having women uh, log on who didn't even have emails and connecting to the world. 
And uh, we are very, very lucky that we actually have Nema, who is here with us today, who has traveled from the Democratic Republic of Congo. She's in the audience. Nema, could you stand up? Where is our sister? Yes, there she is in the back. This is uh, a world leader here in our midst, and I encourage you all to connect with Nema throughout the conference. We are on a panel today at 2.45 p.m. here, and you're going to hear her story about how she used technology to channel the voices of the women of the Congo to the White House. I encourage you to come. <laughs> We also have Stella Paul. She's a survivor of female infanticide. She began to write on World Pulse the stories of the sex workers and, and trash pickers. And not only that, training them how to use their cell phones to free themselves if they were ever trafficked, as well as how to text their village representatives on key issues that they cared very much about. And now, uh, Stella's winning so many awards but her vision is to train over 10,000 women and bring their voices online into, into this revolution. <laughs> so, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here, let's look at where we are right now. Right now, data is showing us, and diverse institutions agree, that investing and empowering women is the fastest way that we can solve all global problems. Okay? But it's not happening fast enough. We're not connected enough. By some accounts, it will be over 500 years before women achieve full leadership equality. And, you know, we just do not have this kind of time. So, what do we do? I'm going to talk you through the three key steps for how to crowdsource the feminine intelligence of the planet. First, first thing we need to do is turn on the lights. We must build an accessible online infrastructure to reach as many women as possible, to bring and connect their voices, and turn on that light that happens when she starts to believe in the power of her own voice. Secondly, I call this link the transmitters. What this means is we're seeing this phenomenon of women, wired women leaders like Nema, like Sister Zeph, like Stella, who are going out and reaching hundreds of more women in their communities who might be illiterate or they might be offline, and bringing their voices online, uploading them, as well as collaborating with men. If we connect these transmitters, what is going to happen is this new exchange this form of knowledge exchange and creation that has been previously unheard of to solve these global crises. And the truth is, the truth is that there is a greater collective feminine intelligence that is still waiting to be born on this planet. So, once we have uh, sourced all these collective solutions, what we must do is we must respond with a massive infusion of resources and skills. We need to back up and get behind these new pathways that are merging that women are showing us. And what we will need to do is have a massive redistribution of power and resources towards these solutions. And this is the only way that we are going to scale up uh, our global solutions. All right, the final chorus. What can you do now? Well, you can join us on World Pulse. We have a, a special URL with your cell phone today. You can listen. You can connect. You can become a listener. You can become a mentor. You want to know what is really happening in Syria and what you can do? Well, listen to them, connect to them. Or girls in Uganda or in Chicago, connect and ask her what is her vision and tell her you believe in her and support her. And, and as her light starts to turn on, your light will as well and you are going to get every bit as much back. 
And when we make these connections on a massive scale, I'm telling you, we're going to create this vocal uprising. Women's voices are going to come out of the shadows and drive their own destinies. And as a collective force, women will have the power that global decision makers will no longer be able to ignore us. We will be able to overturn dictatorships, shift whole economies, lead new innovations, and restore the earth. Thank you.